and the preference renal replacement therapy for diabetic end stage renal disease. And this will be the end of the talk, actually. But the agenda includes general view, why it is important, what is the relevance for diabetic, definition and importance. Do we have better modality for diabetic end stage transplantation? What is bad for doing hemodialysis for diabetic, the vascular access, and the hemodialysis prescription and the management and the new challenge among these women in Greece? What about the general view? If you see the hemodialysis is still, unfortunately, this is not working, uh, the, the hemodialysis is increasingly still in this line. And even the prevalence of hemodialysis in the whole universe is better. The preteria is still low, not only in Egypt, but in all over the world. CKD, of course, as you know, is an epidemic, and we only see the stage 5.3, or we concentrate on this one. But actually, we have 5.9 million in stage 1. And not only that, but the CKD <coughs> Coming to deaths before dialysis is prominent. Just look to this curve. The death is increased even before they reaching dialysis. We have a stable kidney function, but the patient died mainly because of cardiovascular mortality, even in stage three and stage two. And that's the main reason why we didn't reach stage five. Also in the uh, F3 study, if you see the estimated G file, we have 3.3% population here, and maybe rising to 4.2, but only 0.1% in end stage renal disease. And the burden is immense about the diabetes, hypertension, and obesity to go to CKD and then end stage renal disease. Why it is important this one? Because of the diabetes as an incidence increase as here in comparison even to hypertension and also the rate per million increase the diabetes. And if you see the prevalence of the diabetic is increasing both by a rate for million and for a number of patients. <coughs> in May from just a, a, month ago, a few months ago in September, this is the chapter of the UK registry, data registry, showed that the most common identifiable diagnosis was GM qualified diabetes, and the transplantation, as they did, was the most common treatment modality, followed by hemodialysis and the PD, although the UK has a very good program of PD, and the conclusion that the hemodialysis and transplant population continue to expand while the PD population contracted, against whatever we shall go to say. And there was a national and regional anti-dialysis center level variation in prevalence rate. And this showed that this patient now is older by four years. And there is an implication. They are not doing that just for published things, but they service. the service planning is different according to this data. And if you see, because diabetes is still the 51% coming hypertension, but this data coming from the American College of Physicians. The other things, what you think, if the general population, the cause of death may be increasing by 85%. <coughs> if you go to end stage, a patient with only 20 years or maybe 30 years has a probability of going death by 80. So being in an end stage has a probability of dying like an 80 years normal. And with the prophecy, there is a more likely to progress to end stage, but before that, you go uh, most likely to die. Actually, more cause the mortality increase if combined diabetes with CKD. And the increase in the incidence of diabetes in the network. And this is predicted to actual cause of it. And of course, as you know, that end stage renal disease become next to the lung cancer as a main cause of death even before colon cancer. Not only that, if you have this general population, the dialysis patient will die much more easier and more, uh, more pronounced than the general population. Diabetic nephropathy is a leading cause of end-stage kidney disease 
And it is a progressive kidney disease and most common cause of end stage renal disease in US and more likely to die than progress to end stage renal disease. What is the relevance of diabetic? Is it one disease? This is the statement, a single disease with a single cause, with a single pathogenetic factor, and needs a single drug regimen. This is a totally false statement, at least what I'm convinced. Because you have a different types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2, and latent and secondary, and this may lead to diabetic nephropathy, and this has got a five phases, and not only that, if you combine hypertension, you will have a different different clinical scenario, maybe 20 disease scenario. And if you have a different patient, old and cardiac and hepatic, we have a 1,000 maybe cases and a different drug interaction. So not every patient is like the other one. It is not a disease that has got one answer. Also, the antihypertensive and anti-diabetic and anti lipid and adjuvant treatment differ, so your patient is completely different than his colleague. Of course, you must think about insulin resistance and the different acting mechanisms of this insulin resistance, including atherosclerosis, hypertension, and visiting and aging. Although the development and progression of diabetic nephropathy may be retarded by normalization of the blood pressure as AIDS and strict control of the plasma glucose, still patient progress to end state. Important determinants of progression include the severity of histological disease and the reduced amount of proteinuria. Diabetes is the most common cause of a new patient as 44% and it may rise vary from 34 and 30 percent. But think about Denmark. The incidence appears to have been stabilized in Denmark, which may be due to widespread implementation of intensive renal protective methods. <coughs> Type 2 diabetes, not all of them, only 40 percent, even if you don't interact, will reach diabetic nephropathy. The common question the patient will ask you, I have a type 2 diabetes, what is the probability that I will have my kidney damage? It is only 40%. And the most common renal replacement therapy in this patient is still hemodialysis, but it gives rise to a number of clinical problems, in particular difficulties in management of vascular access and high frequency of intradiabetic hypotension. However, patients who have diabetes are, uh, on peritoneal dialysis face a progress and increase in their peritoneal variability and loss of water filtration and criteria by those. All these phenomena being accelerated in patients with diabetes. Even the PD in diabetic is not very smooth. And diabetic survival of mental dialysis is lower than that seen in a non-diabetic of any stage. That's a fact. As noted in the US RDS database, 25% of patients with diabetes survive five years on dialysis. And this is inversely related to age and the best being best in young rather than old. This is the different regency and of course the best is that as Professor Hassan alluded to, then coming Japan. But even still the diabetic is more dying than not diabetic. The cardiovascular disease is the most common cause of death and the ages, the advanced glycation in the product is the most important pathogenetic factor. The adequacy of dialysis and the decrease in the nutritional status is the contributor of this worst outcome. The morbidity associated with insufficient dialysis in diabetic may be mediated through anorexia and decreased caloric and protein intake. And the potential importance of malnutrition and plasma, albumin, and creatinine concentration related to this. And that's because of withdrawal of dialysis is also more likely to occur in diabetes. In US RDS reports, if you remember this 25% death rate of the diabetic on hemodialysis, but if, if you transplant this patient, it is 75 to 83% survival. There's no death. Most of the patients will live. <coughs> this less optimal results may be due to largely extra renal vascular disease. 
in comparison to 25% after five years on dialysis. Transplantation is also associated with a better quality and rehabilitation. But coming before the kidney alone is the kidney pancreatic or post or simultaneous or sequential after that. And this is the curve to illustrate this. I will not go through this. Some of the benefits associated with this renal transplantation may be to a patient selection. We must admit that. Because these patients who receive a transplant are usually younger and less likely to have type 2 diabetes. But even that, however, improved outcome with transplantation is seen even if the evaluation of dialysis patient is limited to relatively healthy subjects in comparable to patient on dialysis. Thus, factors in addition to selective bias must also be important. It is possible, for example, that restoration of the near normal function following transplantation retards the progress, sorry, retards the progress of uh, this process. And actually dialysis, as you know before. So the impact of diabetes, dialysis on that diabetes, including autonomic insufficiency, the blood drop is very high. The medical calcification increase, the white pulse suppression, hypertensive cardiomyopathy, including preload and cardiac function after load. And this is killed your patient. And actually, this is not happened in the PD. So, choice of dialysis modality in diabetic is dependent on part upon the following factors which apply to non diabetic the comorbid condition, the home situation the independence and motivation, and the toleration of volume shift. Mm -hmm. And fluid removal is more gradual with CBD rather on hemodialysis. The choice of dialysis modality in diabetics, including also the vasculature of the app and the abdominal status, and the risk and history of infection. The relative effect of hemodialysis on, uh, and CBD on survival is uncertain still. They will suggest that CPD associated with better outcome rather than hemodialysis. But another reference coming from another article shows that mortality may actually be increased in diabetic with CPD than hemodialysis. And one way to found that the increased risk was limited to healthy diabetic patients. <coughs> Subsequent study of prevalent patients for three successive years show 19% higher mortality in CPD rather than hemodialysis. There are, however, potential problems in this data, including at that time, there's no thinking of how to deliver the dialysis, what about the residual renal function and the comorbid condition. That's